Hello and welcome back to this channel. So in today's tutorial, we're going to use Adobe Fresco and layer mask to create some unique illustration on a photograph. So let's just get started. So what you see on screen is what you're going to create today. If you want to download the same photograph, the color palette and the sketch, please go ahead and check the link in the description box below. Okay, so let's go ahead to gallery. I'm going to choose a small postcard for this illustration. So you can either click on custom size or create new. Go to print and you'll see a small postcard. By the way, if your small postcard shows up like this, click on this tiny arrow here and switch to landscape and then click on the small postcard. Let's go ahead and bring in our color palette and the photograph. Click on your images, go to your photos and bring in the image. I'm just going to expand this so that it fits in the artboard very nicely. Once you're done, click on done. Let's get the color palette. Now let's choose the colors, click and hold to choose the color and just tap outside. And this is just white. Once you're done, just delete the layer which you have all the tabs and just hide the color palette. Now if you click on your color palette, let me just do that. You can see all your colors here in the recent tab. So let's start first by actually dividing this photograph into two pieces. That is, I'm going to put these two girls in one layer and I'm going to put the background in another layer. The reason you want to do that is if I take this photograph and try to take some brush, I'm going to take ink and Belgian comics as my brush. And right now I have white color. And if I try to draw something and I have to be so careful because it can go on top of the girl. So I have to like really carefully draw everything to make sure that the illustration is behind the girls or in between the girls and the mountains over here. Let me just undo that using two finger tabs. Okay, so first I'm going to go into my selection tool, click and make sure you're on this selection tool and I'll roughly draw around the girls. You don't have to go too close to the girls. Just roughly draw around them and make sure you come back and join this point. So now you have selected these things. Now I'm going to go to the layer, click and select create a mask. It asks you that it wants to convert them. Click on convert. All right. Now we see only the girls, but the background disappeared. But don't worry, we just masked it. So that means it's still in here. So now go back. That is swipe to go to the layer, which has the full photograph. Click and duplicate this layer. And in this layer, we're going to choose such a way that only the background is going to be left. So swipe back. And now you have the mask, which is only the girls. So click and click on inward mask. So now if I switch back here as well, you can see that the masks are inverted here. So one layer has the background and the other layer has the girls. So if you want to see which layer has what, you just have to swipe into the image layer here like this, and then you can use this eye button to hide or unhide the mask. So now I'm going to go back to the first image that I have. That's the first layer where I actually separated out the girls. And I'll go to my brush and make sure you go to something like basic or hard round. It should be a really basic brush. Adjust the size accordingly. Mine is set to 22. And even though it's white, it doesn't matter which color you're in and swipe to go to the mask. Okay, now what you're gonna do is remove these extra bits of space between the girl and the mask that we have done. To make that, make sure you're in hide mode. And then you can see that you can clearly delete that excess off like this. If you're a little confused, just make sure you go to the top layer and uncheck that so that now you see only the girls. So go back here to the layer which has the mask for the girls. So I'm going to go ahead and click on hide, which is really important because if you click on reveal, it's just going to bring back everything that you did. So let me click on hide. I'm going to hide this extra things around the girls so that it has a very nice crisp edge. Let me quickly go ahead and do that.
Okay, so now you can see that I've deleted off all those things. I've actually not deleted off the photograph, which is still intact, as you can see here. Now I'll go back here and turn on the background, and you can see that I've deleted off the extra things in the mask that I had. Okay, I know it sounds a bit confusing, but don't worry, it'll be all right. So now that we have worked with mask, it's time to flatten them. We don't want to work with mask anymore, so I'm just going to go into this layer and click on flatten mask. I'll go to the other layer as well and click on flatten mask. So now these two are nothing but images. Like for example, if I uncheck this, you can see this image here. And if I uncheck that, yeah. So it's just basic image right now and there's no mask at all. So let's go to the background layer now. And now we have to fill in these gaps because we don't want this white gap showing up. So for this, you can choose a lot of brushes, but my favorite would be the watercolor brush. You can go ahead and watercolor watercolor wash flat and in here I'm going to keep the flow at about 53 or 54 and in here I'll probably keep this a little high that's at 86 and the brush size this is at 258 which I'm going to test and for color we don't want any color on our brush to make sure that we have just water on our brush and none of the colors all you have to do is reduce this opacity to 0%. Now it's just water on your brush and not a color. As you can see, my color is actually very dark pink right now or, you know, a maroon. But if I try to paint it here, it's not going to show up because it's just going to be plain water. So let's go to the background layer and try to draw like this so that we can cover this region. Please don't try to do this in one stroke like this because then it creates this weird water effect which we don't want. So just try to pull in the water inside like that. Please adjust your water flow or the brush size depending on how huge your artboard is. Once you have it here, I think we've got it covered. Okay. So I'm going to quickly add some things around here so that it doesn't look odd. Okay. That looks good. And now all I have to do is bring this behind the girl layer. You just have to click and hold and then it activates it and then you can bring it down. And now you can see that all that white space is gone. So the girls don't look separated out from the photograph. If you feel like you don't like this blotches here, there's always a method to do that. You can go ahead and increase the size, go to your background layer and just put in a little bit of water here and there just so that it blends in a little and it doesn't look quite odd. Okay, now it's time to make the illustration. You can do it right on this layer here, but I would suggest clicking on a new layer and now let's go ahead and try to illustrate something. If you have sketch right now, you can go to your photos and bring in your sketch and make sure you reduce the opacity of the sketch and turn the blend mode to multiply. But I'm not going to be using the sketch. I'm just going to draw it like by freehand. Just to let you know the color palette I've chosen is I just use the method of click and hold on the screen and then I chose some colors from this photograph itself. So let me go back to the Belgian comics brush because that's what I'm going to use. So let me go to the color palette and I want to choose a little darker color because I'm going to put the dark color first and then try on the lighter version. So I'll choose this dark, a nice gray, and then I'm going to draw a flower here. Just to let you know, I'm not using the sketch. So this might look a little different from what I originally showed you or from what you're going to create with the sketch. And I'm going to draw one here. As you can see, I can go draw right behind the girl and still it does not affect the artwork because it shows up nicely since we have separated it out. Now it's time to add some light pink. I'll choose a lighter pink and draw it like this. At this point, you can actually choose to draw on a different layer if you want. If you want to be more organized, you should draw always on different layers. Okay, 
Okay, that looks good. Now let's draw the center of this one. So I'm going to choose this color. It's almost a black, I guess. So let's draw the center. As you can see, my flower is really abstract. Okay, I like that. And now let's go ahead and draw some leaves. So let's choose the same color that we have and we're going to draw some leaves now. But I want to create a new layer here because uh, I want some leaves to be on a, you know, it should be on the flower and I want to be able to edit it. So let's go ahead and draw the leaf. I guess one goes here. Another here. A little down and one over her shoulder, one here and one here. Okay, that looks fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose the white and just draw something like this. It's too thick. By the way, the brush setting is at 73. Sorry, I forgot to tell you about that. So now let's go ahead and do some buds. I'll click on new layer again, and I'll choose the darker color that is a bit grayish color. And let's go ahead and draw some buds here. So you just scribble like this. And your buds are going to be ready. Add some here. Okay, and let's choose the other color. Get some here. I need some blue ones here, so I'm going to click and hold and select that color. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go to a new layer, which should be on top of the pot layer. And I chose the same black color that we used for these leaves. All you have to do is just do like that on each bird. I'm going to bring it down here. Like that. Okay. That looks good and I don't like them coming on top of the flower so I'm just going to click and bring it below the florals here and I'm also going to bring the buds but right below the stalk so yeah it looks like this now and I think that looks fine and if you want you can add more stuff so please go ahead and do that now I'm go ahead and choose a white color this is just so that I can add some extra bits here and there and I think that would look nice, for example, something like this. Maybe like that. Mm, nope. Oh, like that. Can just do some dots. Things like that. Okay, and finally, it's time to add some text. You can add anything you want. I would always do it on a new layer. You can go ahead and use the text tool here to create some text, but I would like to use a brush tool. That is, I'm going to use the Belgian comics itself because it's be it'll probably be cohesive so I'm just going to use that and I will choose the dark color and uh, I just want to say I 
I know Valentine's Day is long gone, but it's not too late to express your love. So let's just click on that layer and I'm going to click on the transform layer and make sure I bring it to the center of the artboard and click on done. So now you can go ahead and edit it even more. For example, if you had put these flowers on a different layer, you could have actually added a bit of shadow here so that the flowers would pop. And uh, yeah, you could have done a lot more things with this. But I think I'm going to end this tutorial right here. Once you're done with everything, you can just click on share, publish and export, export as and export it as a PNG. You can either save it on your device or send it to other devices that you have, like your Mac or your laptop, and then upload it anywhere you want, create cards out of it, or anything that fancies you, basically. So there's so many things you can do with layer masks, and this is one of the things that you can do that is draw on photographs to make it or personalize it, you know, or to create something custom made for your loved ones. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button. And of course the notification bell so that you get notified when I post a new video. I post a fresco tutorial every Tuesdays. Okay, so I guess I'll see you in the next video then. Bye-bye.